Hello everybody, welcome back to Sophisticates by Mary. For this video, I'm going to show you how to make this very striking, modern, simplistic fondant cake. Now I'm in love with this design, so <laughs> I am hoping that you enjoy it as much as I do. So stick around and we'll get right to it. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and stack our cake. I did five layers, I believe, oh no, four layers of six inch square cakes. And I used a square board underneath it and on top of it when I'm doing my frosting. And I'll show you how that makes frosting a square cake even easier. And the trick to that is to have the board be between a, about a quarter of an inch um, wider on each side than the actual cake. And I'm just damming this with a thickened buttercream and filling it with, it's a combination of chocolate ganache and buttercream. It makes a very yummy chocolate creamy filling. Now, if you notice my voice is funny, if, if you watched my last video, I told you I have a cold. Well, now I have allergies. So this is fun for me. <laughs> anyway, so since this is a taller, heavier cake, I am using some bubble tea straws or some tea straws and another board that I cut down to size in between the four layers of cake just to support that weight just a little bit. And just put a little buttercream underneath this board and then I just did another layer of buttercream filling instead of the ganache buttercream filling because I didn't want it to slip around on top of that board. Now I will try to find where I got these pans from. I think I ordered them from a specialty like a, an ex, a, a not from Amazon, but from an actual person that makes these pans, and that was a while ago, so I'll try to find them. But I really like them because they have very sharp, crisp corners and edges, and that makes everything easier. Now what I did was I had cut both of these boards, one on the top and the one on the bottom, at the same time, so that they are exactly the same size. And put a little buttercream underneath the one on the top, put it shiny side down, and then what you're gonna do is just fill in between the boards. That is the easiest way that I have found to get these sharp corners. And since you're gonna do fondant on top of this, you're gonna want your corners sharp to begin with and that just makes your job easier at the end. And I'm just using that combination of ganache and buttercream to do a crumb coat here. And I'm smoothing it with my tall acrylic um, scraper. Since this is a double barrel, you're gonna need a taller scraper so that your scraper is touching the top and the bottom at the same time. And that way you know that your buttercream or your ganache or whatever you're using in between the boards is completely level and flush. Now I had put it in the refrigerator after I did that rough crumb coat to actually put it in the freezer for about 20 minutes to firm up. You want it nice and firm before you put your final coat on top of that. Trust me, if your foundation is firm, it's so much easier to do the rest. Don't, don't try to um, go ahead and do it without chilling in between. You will definitely waste a lot of time trying to fix it. This just, just do it, it's so much easier. And then to get these crisp corners, I filled in each corner first and then um, in between. And then I use my scraper, I go in from the sides in towards the middle on, on all corners, that way you get your crisp corner. And then go ahead and chill it again. And then once you bring it out of your freezer or your refrigerator, just use a sharp knife or an offset spatula to remove that top board and then fill it in and um, get your corners. So what I did there was I measured the top and the bottom to the bottom and all the way around. And that gave me my height and my distance around. And I went ahead and I add another inch or two to both of those measurements. And that's what I showed you on that um, the uh, little piece of paper is that's how I figure out how big my piece of fondant needs to be. Now I just used varying shades of white and grays and blacks in this and I am just rolled them into log, little logs and roll them all together. And you'll see I do this in different ways. I twist it and then I roll it and then sometimes I pull it. I um, find that each time is different. Each time you do this is going to be different. And then go ahead and put some cornstarch on your surface and on top and roll it out and just kind of take a look and see which side you're liking better. Now, I some words of advice is don't expect it to be perfect right away. 
And so I have some extra pieces of black and some extra pieces of white that I had set to the side because I knew I wanted to have some um, bigger sections of the white and some bigger sections of the black. I didn't want it all blended together so much. It kind of a gradation of colors in between there. So that's kind of an optical illusion. It's a lot easier than it looks. And then just roll those real thin and just attach them to this larger piece of fondant with some shortening. And I like to pull those ends kind of out so that they're more wispy and you don't have such definite lines. I wanted it all, like I said, kind of to blend a little bit. And when you roll it out together like that, you do end up merging them into each other. And then I just wanted some rough edges, so I just kind of pulled those pieces off. And just kind of patchwork quilting this together till you get it to looking the way you want it to look. And a little helpful hint on when you see a design like this, and it looks kind of intimidating when you first see it, what I like to do is go down to the basics of this cake. So start with the, the basics of the cake itself. It's a square cake, so I know I needed to um, get those sharp corners, and I know to get those sharp corners to use those boards. And then when it comes to the actual um, design itself, the background of it is black and white. So we start there. We roll out some black, we roll out some white, and then we merge those together, and that's what I'm doing here. And just roll that seam so it's, it's as flush as you can get it, because you don't want that bulging. Once you put your, all your pieces together, you want those straight lines. So go ahead and roll that out. And I had made this marbled piece ahead of time because I knew I was going to be lifting it around and moving it around. So I wanted it to set up a little bit while I was preparing the background. And then I'm just attaching that on with some shortening. And go ahead and do your fine tuning once you get that on. And if your fondant is sitting out, and firming up a little bit, it's okay. Now you do have some sharp corners, so you don't want to leave it sitting out as long as you would for a round cake because a round is a more gradual tapering or bend. A sharp corner, you don't want to get cracking on that corner, so don't wait as long as you would if you're paneling a round cake. But you still, you want it to firm up a little bit so you can lift it up. So I would say a good maybe 30 minutes to 45 minutes as you're working on all this. Try to get that all done within 30 minutes to 45 minutes or so. And don't mind that board, it's gross. I know, it's the one I took off the top, but I wanted to use this as a template to cut the piece of fondant for the top. Now I'm just using some very thin brushed on shortening to attach the fondant to the cake. I like to use shortening because if you misplace it, you can pull it away and rearrange it. If you use water or simple syrup, you might pull some of that ganache or buttercream or whatever you're using off of the cake. And since shortening is mixed in with your fondant, you mix shortening in with your fondant when you're conditioning it, it's already in there, so it's going to absor absorb into the fondant. And I wanted to show you there, I rolled that piece of panel from both sides into the middle so that I could find that's my you know, a middle, just a side, uh, a corner, and attach it there and wrap it around. Because I wanted the pieces to meet up at a corner instead of in the middle of a flat area. That way you can kind of um, camouflage that join a little bit easier. And then I'm using my fondant smoothers to pinch it together kind of pinch those pieces together. Sometimes it will come off, sometimes you'll pinch it all the way off, but other times you just go in with your sharp knife and just cut it off. And that's very easy to do since you have pinched them together, you have thinned out where they meet. And then go ahead and use a sharp knife, or I'm using a clay cutter to cut off the excess off the top. And since it has sat and firmed up some, it's easier to cut that off. It doesn't stretch and pull. Now to attach my silk flowers, I'm just using some silk flowers. I just put a straw in and I'm using, and stick the one up that you want up to the top, you know, sticking out the top. And then I'm attaching a wire to the bottom one so that I can drape it over the side. And I'm just attaching it with some, some floral tape. And all of the, both of these pieces will go right into that straw. 
and go ahead and cut off your excess, you don't need it overly long, and bend it so that you can stick it into that straw and it drapes down the side. And just arrange them into a position that you think looks good. And so there's the final product, guys. I hope that you have found with my explanation and showing you how I do this, that it's actually a lot easier. Do not let yourself get intimidated by these designs. Break it down. And if you have any questions, please leave me a message and I'll do my best to get back to you. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.